The next item of business is the election of a speaker. Uh, Mr. Clark, uh, I move that the honourable member for McKellar do take the chair of this house. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Clark, the member for McKellar's long years of meritorious service in this house and in another place well and truly equip her to be an excellent speaker of this parliament. As uh, all of us who have known the honourable member well for a long time understand, she is a formidable character. And I can think of no one more likely to deal with all of the other formidable characters in this place <laughs> without fear or favour. Bronwyn can do what is necessary to maintain control of what is sometimes an unruly house. This chamber should always be a place of spirited debate, but it should never be a place where motives are impugned or characters assassinated. When any of us, when any of us are tempted, when any of us are tempted, when any of us, when any of us are tempted, Mr. Clark, to be low, mean, or petty, uh, the member for McKellar is well equipped to recall us to our duty. Mr Clark, this parliament will be a different one and a better one, I hope. The member for McKellar loves this parliament. She reveres its traditions and she has the capacity to help all of us to be at our best. And I commend her nomination to the House. Thank you, Mr Clark. It's my great honour to second the nomination of the member for McKellar as a Speaker of this House. The member for McKellar is the first member of parliament that I met on my first day in parliament 20, year, 20 and a half years ago. I arrived at the Senate chamber to see my great friend Amanda Vanstone. I walked in as a fresh-faced 25-year-old Member of Parliament, like many of uh, our colleagues on this side of the House and the other side of the House, came through the doors, had been questioned by the attendants as to whether I was a Member of Parliament because I'd left my badge at home in my flat, which is a common occurrence for many new Members of Parliament. And the first person I ran into was the then Senator Bishop. She clasped me by both forearms, kissed me on both cheeks and said, <laughs> You and I are going to become great friends. <laughs> I was a little sceptical at the time. <laughs> but 21 years later, it is my great privilege and honour to nominate her, to second her nomination as Speaker in this chamber. There is nobody else in this chamber who will do the job as well in the 44th Parliament as Speaker of the House. The member for McKellar is knowledgeable, she's experienced, She's intelligent, she's uh, effortlessly charming, and, as, uh, and she's as tough as a Sherman tank as she has described herself uh, over the years. In fact, she used to have a model of a Sherman tank on her desk when she was a minister. I hope that she will be generous, particularly to her nominator and seconder on this side of the chamber. I expect her to be firm, uh, especially with the opposition, and sometimes I think she will be with the government and that would only be because it was appropriate at the time. Laurie Oakes said in the uh, newspapers on the weekend that uh, it was the situation of the poacher becoming gamekeeper for the member for McKellar to be the speaker. My advice to the fourth estate is that poachers usually make very good gamekeepers, and I commend her nomination as Speaker of the House. Yeah. Does the member for McKellar accept nomination? Mr. Clark. Is there any further proposal? It, that the member for McEwen do take the chair of this House as Speaker. In, in, doing so, in, in doing so, the opposition is not unmindful of the tradition of governments and promoting their own for this position, but there is also a strong tradition of oppositions putting forward and supporting their own. There is occasionally a lament that the modern Labor Party no longer has any tradesmen as MPs, 
but the member for McEwen's background with uh, RACV roadside assist makes him someone about whom this cannot be said, as well as making him a very useful person to know. He, he was elected to the Victorian Parliament in 2002 as the first Labor MP to represent the Central Highlands electorate in the Legislative Council. When he came to this parliament in 2010, he brought with him considerable understanding of regional Victoria. He was a founding member of Victoria's first community emergency response team and passionately devoted himself to assist the many families in his electorate who were devastated by the Black Saturday bushfires of 2009. During the last parliament, he served on the Speaker's panel and as deputy chair of the Regional Australia Committee and on the NBN Committee. This uh, election for Speaker does come against a somewhat unfortunate background. After the 2010 election, the opposition was aggrieved that it had not won and, in particular, that the independents had not supported them. They hoped to make the hung parliament unworkable and to force an early election. They refused, for example, to provide any members for the Speaker's panel and engaged in a parliamentary strategy of havoc and chaos and mayhem. In doing so, they caused some damage to the standing of this parliament. Given that there appeared to be no penalty for this conduct, there is some grievance on this side of the House and, of course, the temptation to retaliate in kind. We are, however, aware of the desire of the Australian people that parliamentary standards improve and that the conduct of MPs improves. This is where the role of Speaker is important. No one doubts that the member for McKellar is experienced, but we have experience of her. I think members will understand what I'm saying when I say that she is very black and white. There are certainly no shades of grey with her. I understand that it is her intention to continue atten to attend meetings of her party room. On this side, we are looking for a speaker who can be even-handed, reasonable capable of seeing the other person's point of view, capable of seeing the other side of the argument. In this respect, I commend to the House someone like former Speaker Jenkins, the member for Scullin, who I think was adept at presiding over the House through goodwill and earning the consent of members, uh, earning the consent of members rather than through the use of the rule book. And in this respect, I think that the member for McEwen has the right qualities. He is liked by both sides of the House, is capable of seeing the other person's point of view, and given those qualities, I urge the House to support his nomination. The member for Wills. Uh, comments about the member for McEwen and also his comments about the member for McKellar. Uh, I've only been here. This is my third parliament, um, so I haven't seen the member for McKellar in the chair. Uh, as the member for Wills said, uh, unfortunately, because of the directions of the then leader of the opposition, no member of the then opposition sat on the speaker's panel, apart from the member for Maranoa, a good and honourable man. Who, who, sat, who sat in his uh, position as uh, Deputy Speaker and did his job admirably. So I didn't see the member for McCullough in that position uh, and to know how, how fair she could be. Uh, but obviously a Speaker must be in love with democracy. They must be in love with democracy. They, don't, they cannot use their role as a mechanism to wield power and promote privilege or protect privilege. That is not what this chamber is for. The 150 people elected to this chamber have a solemn duty to their electorates, and it's about democracy. Now, so I, I've never seen the member for McKellar sitting in the chair and being fair and impartial and bringing that. I, I think the, uh, the, lead, the Prime Minister said that the role should restore dignity. Well, I, I take offence at that because the 43rd Parliament had dignity. <laughs> Just because you didn't act in a dignified way does not mean that the, the parliament here. didn't have here dignity. Here. Now, we, when, we, when we unpack democracy, when we unpack, for di when we unpack democracy, we could look at, the members, look at what the members have done. Let's look at whether the member for McKellar followed that great liberal tradition of looking at the policy, 
and crossing the floor uh, if she's prepared to be bipartisan. I, I looked at I've only seen two parliaments and I've only seen two people in this chamber cross the floor on a topic. Only two MPs. I, I think the member for McKillen did a, about asylum seekers and he was rewarded by being totally, uh, totally overlooked. We had the member for Wentworth cross the floor about the ETS and uh, he, was he was rewarded by being placed on the cover of the Real Solutions brochure. <laughs> I also went to the other place. I went to the other place and saw Senator Sue Boyce cross the floor the day after the member for Warringa was made leader, and she was rewarded by being overlooked and then booted out of parliament. I know the member for New England has crossed the floor, and I look forward to seeing how he goes when it comes to voting on Grain Corp. I'm sure he will um, talk tough and walk soft. So let's look at how the member for McKellar and the member for McEwen have treated democracy. And the best way to analyse is how they've voted on legislation that brings the votes to Australian people. Let's look after the election, the 2010 election review, where one point, we try to get 1.5 million people back on the electoral roll. Look at the report of the member for McKellar, a dissenting report, a dissenting report into, into that election, uh, dissenting, a dissenting report. Well, and then it has also been suggested. I'm sorry to say this, Member for McEwen, that perhaps, perhaps you are not as you know. You're, maybe we should support the Member for McKellar for the sisterhood rather than the Member for McEwen. You know, you, you uh, have a Y chromosome. She 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 doesn't. So let's have a look. You know, there is a saying that the head slave whips the hardest. Let's have a look at how the Member for McKellar has treated the sisterhood when given the opportunity. When given the opportunity to stand out in front of a poster out front of this place saying, ditch the witch, to saying, Julia, Bob Brown's bitch, what did she do? Did she apologise? Did she apologise for that? Never. Never apologise for that. And she actually said the people that had those signs were good, decent Australians. This is the fact. That's the fact. We're about to make a decision about the democracy in this place. I think very seriously about these decisions. So, obviously, obviously there is an important, it is an important role and it's good to have a bit of humour and I have seen the member for McKellar in the last six years make two good jokes. Uh, she made a joke about the size of Julia Gillard's nose, then she made a joke about the clothes that Julia Gillard wore. They were quite funny. But the humour of a, someone in the chair needs to have a touch of self-deprecation about it. I think the member for McKellar has deprecation done, down pat, but, but that is not the case. Now, the reality is, the reality is we should choose the member for McEwen for the sake of democracy in this chamber. Does the member for McEwen accept nomination? Is there any further proposal? The time for proposals has expired. In accordance with Standing Order 11, the bells will be rung and a ballot taken.
Honourable members, ballot papers will now be distributed. Will honourable members please write on the ballot paper the name of the candidate for whom they wish to vote? The candidates are Mrs. B. K. Bishop and Mr. Mitchell.
the result of the ballot, the result of the ballot is Mrs. B. K. Bishop, 93 votes. Mr. Mitchell, 56 votes. Mrs. B. K. Bishop is declared elected. I wish to express uh, my grateful thanks for the high honour that has been bestowed on me by the House. I give the call to the Honourable the Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, uh, on behalf of, uh, I trust, the whole House and certainly on behalf of the government, uh, I congratulate you on the high office to which uh, you have been elected. Uh, yes, over the years uh, you have been a very tough politician, uh, but uh, as well as being a very tough politician, you are, as was said earlier in this chamber, someone who understands the rhythms of this House, who understands the importance of this chamber in our democracy and who genuinely wants the best for our country. You understand that uh, if this parliament is at its best, our country will be closer to its best. You understand that all of us are called to be better uh, and you are determined to ensure that this parliament is a better parliament uh, than the one it replaces. Uh, I don't uh, attribute blame, unlike perhaps some, uh, for the difficulties and the frustrations of the last parliament. Uh, all, of us, all of us can do better in this parliament than we did in the last parliament. I am determined to do that. Uh, I trust all in this House are determined to do that. And I know, Madam Speaker, that you will hold us to the high standards that you have always set in your own life. I call the Honourable the Leader of the Opposition. Speaker Bishop. I congratulate you and I wish you well in terms of your tasks for the 44th Parliament. All of us know that you have a fondness for the standing orders and indeed a forensic passion for our other standing orders. You bring to this House decades of experience. I believe with your capacities, no doubt, that in another government you would have been a very good minister. I trust you to be independent, as you have stated. And I believe that through you carrying out your functions in an independent manner, you will honour the best traditions of the Westminster system. Again, on behalf of the opposition, please accept our congratulations. I call the Deputy Prime Minister and Leader of the National Party. Well, Madam Speaker, may I congratulate you on your election to this office. Uh, you've held most positions in this parliament, um, in the other chamber and here. A member of the Senate, a member of the House of Representatives, you've been a minister, you've been a shadow minister, you've been active in the parliamentary committee systems. Uh, you have certainly uh, played a major role in the, in the parliament now over quite a long period of time. Uh, you had five years on the House Procedures Committee, which would be an excellent opportunity for you to have grasped what, uh, the, the, the experience that you need about how the standing orders work and no doubt given you some ideas also about how you might like this parliament to work better in the future. In many ways, in spite of all of the things that you have done as a parliamentarian and, your, and, and you have been well recognised and acknowledged around the country for those achievements, I think you have in some ways always been destined to be speaker. Uh, it's certainly been uh, one of your loves and I think it will be a very, very brave member of parliament that comes to the dispatch box with House of Representatives practice under their arm and challenges your, uh, your, your rulings. Um, you know every page, seemingly every paragraph, and, uh, and I'm sure that you will exercise your experience to the benefit of the House. 
Uh, I think that it, 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 the last parliament uh, was a challenging time for the speaker. And the fact that there were three speakers obviously didn't help. But it was a parliament that uh, I think many of us would like to put behind us. I think the public expect the public expect our parliament to behave better in the future. Uh, they, want a, they want a parliament that's orderly and businesslike, and I believe that you have the skills and the talents and the ability to lead the parliament, to uh, aspire to achieve uh, reform and to, and to make sure that the business of the parliament is conducted in an orderly and businesslike manner in the future. Uh, it is, of course, up, for, uh, up to us as members of parliament to support you in that role uh, so that we can have a parliament that the people of Australia will respect uh, in, uh, for the 40, 44th class. Uh, congratulations on your elections and, and, and my very best wishes to you uh, in, in that role. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the member for oh, the deputy leader of the opposition. Uh, thank you, Speaker Bishop, and I rise to uh, add my congratulations uh, on your elevation. I know that it is a um, position that you have uh, worked very hard for. Um, I ask one thing of you, and that is that uh, I inherit your House of Representatives practice from the last parliament. I haven't seen a more dog-eared one, uh, and I think the, uh, some of the underlinings in that might be very instructive. Um, I uh, add my congratulations and I wish you well. Uh, I know that um, Speaker Burke, Speaker Jenkins, uh, Speaker Slipper before them uh, did have their work cut out for them in the last parliament. Uh, and uh, I anticipate um, that uh, you will not have quite the challenges that uh, those three speakers had, but I hope that uh, in particular um, you will be able to follow the example of Speaker Burke and Speaker Jenkins to deliver uh, unbiased and um, uh, thoughtful uh, decisions that benefit the dignity of the House. Thank you. Yeah. I call the uh, Deputy Leader of the Greens. Thank you, Speaker. On behalf of the Greens, I extend uh, our congratulations to you as well. As has been said, you may have fewer moments in this parliament than our previous speakers where your heart's in your mouth are waiting to see which way the crossbenchers vote on matters of confidence and the like, but I can report from this corner of the chamber that we are still here. And uh, just the uh, reports of the death of the crossbench were remarkably premature, and there were five of us in this parliament compared with the six that were returned at the last uh, parliament. And my uh, one request of you, uh, Madam Speaker, is that when you do look to the right and then look to the left for people seeking the call, that you also look down the middle. Thank you. Thank you. I call the leader of the, of, uh, the house. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and it's a great pleasure to congratulate you on your election. Uh, this is the first time in 21 years that I've had cause to put your name into a ballot, and I'm very glad that uh, you won it, and so overwhelmingly. Uh, I look very much forward to working with you to make this uh, parliament uh, a better place than the 43rd parliament, uh, although it's coming off a very low base. Uh, you have no doubt that as Leader of the House, as Leader of the House, Madam Speaker, uh, I will do my utmost to ensure that members of the government uh, follow the rules, listen to your rulings, understand the standing orders and make the place run as smoothly and as reasonably as is possible in a robust democracy such as ours. Again, congratulations to you. I call the Leader of Opposition Business, <laughs> Manager of Opposition Business. Thanks very much, Speaker. Uh, congratulations. On, on the role that you've achieved today. Uh, this day in Parliament, probably more than any other, uh, functions like a first day back at school. Uh, and people have remarked today uh, about this being reminiscent of the, uh, of the Harry Potter novel with Hogwarts. When they all return to Hogwarts, uh, Dumbledore's gone and Dolores uh, Umbridge is now in charge of the school. We we have a situation where, for everything that has been said, for everything that has been said by those opposite about the commitment to the new parliament, a number of very specific commitments to the new parliament were made. 
Uh, House of Representatives practice on page 167 refers to the fact that speakers ordinarily are nominated by private members, not by the executive and certainly not by the Prime Minister. And in terms of providing the sort of non-partisan role that the speaker provides, the opposition does look forward to those election commitments that were made before the election being kept, including that there will be an independent speaker who will not attend party room meetings. Yeah. Well, I thank uh, honourable members for their comments, and I would say in taking this office and being elected to this office, it is one I consider to be of enormous privilege. Um, the Prime Minister, when he nominated me, said, I care passionately for this place. I do. I care passionately for its traditions. I care passionately for what it represents in looking after the welfare of the people of Australia. And so when we talk about a need for more decorum, what I hope from that is that the people of Australia may see us as upholding their interests in a better way. I noticed the comments uh, that were made earlier when an alternative speaker was uh, nominated, and I think perhaps the lesson there is sometimes you can talk yourself more into trouble than you can out of trouble. <laughs> But that is not to reflect on the way in which I will be in the chair, which I mean to be impartial. The comments that I have made about attending party me meetings and is simply that I am a liberal, uh, but we don't deal with tactics and I wouldn't be part of that. But in this chair, I will act impartially. That is the responsibility uh, that goes back to 1377. And I am delighted to say that I didn't have to struggle too much today because the welfare of speakers has improved markedly over that period. <laughs> so it is part of the tradition that we do indeed show that struggle to show that there were previous speakers when they acted as the interlocutor between the monarch and the parliament uh, that perhaps ended up either in the Tower of London or lost their heads. Can I say also that when we make analogies to the parliament, I regard this as a strong and robust place of debate. It's not a classroom. It's not a polite debating society. It is a place where we fight for ideas. And the width of that table is symbolic in that we don't use weapons and we don't use uh, either swords or fisticuffs. But we do use words and sometimes we use them harshly and we have standing orders that apply to that. But I do hope that as we go forward in this parliament, that we will, we will raise our stakes in the eyes of the people for the peace, order and good government of the people of Australia. And just for the record, the mode of address that I would accept, to expect to receive is Madam Speaker. I also intend to perhaps uh, revive a couple of the other niceties that we, that we have uh, used from time to time, but we'll see how that goes. But can I end on the words simply to say that I am delighted to have my family present in the gallery today. Uh, I am very honoured uh, to have friends who have come also. It is uh, for me, uh, I think, the capping of my career. It is true that I am the first woman from the conservative side of politics to hold this role. We have had two from the Labour side. And I pay respect to Anna Burke for the job that she did. Can I also say that uh, uh, the words that were made uh, reference to that are something about the sisterhood, I have never ever put myself forward other than to say I'm the best person for the job. I hope that is the reason that 93 people voted for me today. <laughs> if I can simply conclude uh, by saying that uh, there will be times when there will be turbulence, there will be times uh, when uh, uh, we can feel that the heat and the anger of the place rises, uh, but it will be my job to try and keep that order whilst remaining, as I said, a place of robust discussion of ideas and competing ideas. So I thank the House uh, for the uh, vote that I have received, and I can simply say I am here to serve in the traditions of the Parliament. I give the Honourable the Prime Minister the call. Madam Speaker, I have ascertained that it will be uh, His Excellen Her Excellency the Governor-General's pleasure to receive you, Madam Speaker, in the Members' Hall immediately after the resumption of sittings at 2.30 p.m. 
Prior to my presentation uh, to, or presentation to uh, His Excellency this afternoon, the bills to Her Excellency this afternoon, the bills will ring for five minutes so that honourable members may attend in the chamber and accompany me to the members' hall, when they may, if they wish to, be introduced to Her Excellency. The sitting is suspended until 2.30 p.m.